All right, we are recording. All right. But we do need to have a meeting to talk about portfolios. Hello. Are we on? Yes. Okay. So uh, today is August 1st, 2019. Um, Calling the meeting to order as we do have a forum. So could you please stand for the next? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. All right, so the first item on the agenda is to swear in uh, Dr. Yanira Oliveras uh, Ortiz. She has uh, been reappointed uh, to the board from the College of Ed and will serve as president uh, again for another two years. So if you will please stand and raise your right hand, you are going to read this statement first. I can even even as Ortiz do solely swear that I have not directly or indirectly paid, offered, promised to pay, contributed, or promised to contribute any money or things of value or promise, any public office or employment for the giving or, or withholding of a vote at the election at which I was elected or as assembly board to secure my appointment or confirmation, whichever the case may be, so help me call. Okay. We'll sign that statement, please. Raise your right hand and do your oath of office. I, Janino Rivera Ortiz, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of the University of UT Tyler University Academy Board President of the State of Texas. I will do the best of my ability, to the best of my ability to protect, preserve, and defend the constitutions and laws of the United States and of this state. So that we are. Please sign now. And then these documents will be notarized by our notary. Welcome back to the board. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the first item on the agenda is the consent on the consent agenda is are the minutes from the July 18th, 2019 meeting. Um, we received those via email. Any questions or comments about the minutes? We have a motion to approve the minutes from the July 18th meeting. Do we have second? Second. Thank okay. you. All in favor? Aye. The next item on the agenda is the request of approval of the policy updates. We have two policy updates. And we received those documents via email. Uh, no, actually, unfortunately. Well, you did. Yeah, we did. Just, yeah. just recently. I'm sorry. Um, it took me a while to get those uh, compiled and to talk to Dr. Simmons about these. So the first one is the 400.140. Um, it is regarding student health and uh, student, student safety. Um, and they, they snuck in an update um, back in December that I was unaware of. And, and officially, or initially when I looked at it, I thought that it would be something that we might be covered under the university policies of the campus police department. Um, but after discussing further with Dr. Simmons, um, we were asking to add this section in at section 4.2. Um, it deals with unauthorized persons and refusal of entry, election, uh, ejection, identification, and appeal. Um, basically, the statements are uh, surrounding what happens when somebody comes on the property who has caused a scene or something has happened that you no longer want this person on the property, How, what your rights are to have that person removed from the property, and basically prevent them from reaccessing the property again at a later date. Um, it does state that, um, you know, in the event that you can, uh, uh, the statement says that the term of a person's refusal of entry to or ejection from a UTTAU property under this section may be up to two years. You cannot extend that beyond two years per the law, um, per legal uh, statements. But you do have to um, allow them by law to have a uh, 
access for their child's admission review and dismissal committees, so your ARDS, um, a child's 504 meeting, or due process hearings and um, parent teacher conferences. So in those situations, you would essentially, they would be required to be escorted and have uh, an appointment basically to be on campus where you know that they're coming and they're being escorted. Very similar to the, the statements that we already have in section 4.3, that refer to what happens with a registered sex offender. Um, as a parent of a, of a student enrolled on our campus, there are certain things that you cannot um, restrict their access to the child's educational needs. So um, that whole section pertains to how you basically go through that process and it defines to them that there is a way for them to appeal, um, which is our grievance policy. <coughs> so that brings them up to 300.120, which would be the initial process. We just felt the need to put it in with care, although we have amazing parents um, in the ER in a situation that it is in our core policies um, and it would be supported um, to remove the person if needed. So what would the process be, say, an IRA ex husband shows up at the school and becomes <coughs> violent or threatens violence? Any staff would call UTPD Correct. and respond here to the campus. Yes, correct. Yes. All three campuses have a officer close by. So um, we share campus with, uh, in Palestine, we share an officer with uh, the Mathis Hall facility. Um, so that person walks back and forth or will now be able to walk back and forth and monitor. And um, in the event the director needs them, if the issue with the student warrants or a parent warrants um, an officer being present, the director can simply just contact that officer and have the officer come over. Um, very similar setup to Palace and Longview within walking distance, the LUC. Um, in fact, that officer is office in the um, UA Longview. So um, that most of the, the time is spent there. He helps with dismissal and pickup. And so <coughs> the, here in Tyler, the officers are across the street. Um, we are trying to. Um, develop an even a stronger partnership where the visibility of an officer is more prominent here in Tyler. I think we see it on the other two campuses simply because they're in walking distance and they can walk back and forth. So they're seen in the halls, they're seen at drop off and pick up, um, but we don't have that opportunity here as much. Yes. So just to, so I, I will be read these three statements or four statements, I guess, where it actually defines the wording. Um, it says that um, uh, the UTTUA um, can refuse to allow a person to enter on or may eject a person from the property under the school control if the person refuses to leave peaceably on request and A, the person poses a substantial risk of harm to the same person or B, the person behaves in a manner that's inappropriate for a school setting and uh, the subset one, the administrator, resource officer, these officer issues a verbal warning to the person that the person's behavior is inappropriate, may result in the person's refusal of entry or rejection, and the subset two, the person persists in that behavior. So verbal warnings yeah. and written warnings are required, and, uh, unless they do uh, pose a substantial risk at that very moment, you can. But in, in terms of permanently uh, 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 banning them from your campus, you have to show that you give them verbal and written warnings. Any other questions? Okay, so do we have a motion to approve um, 400.140, uh, um, the updates to that policy? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Then we have the approval of the next policy. Okay, so the next policy is 400.160. Again, they snuck this in in December. Um, it's very simple, it's section five. Um, all they're basically doing is saying that we do have a, a approved field trip form um, that we use and that has been approved. We have had the form for many years and it has been being utilized. Um, so this is just more official, but actually being stated that we have such a, a form and it includes a copy of the form that we utilize in addition to, um, so there's the actual field trip form, which basically covers, um, you know, the event and, and the information, how they're gonna get there and whatnot. 
but then we also had found the need for, um, and they suggest having the form for if a legal guardian requests to transport their own child or children to the event to have a separate form for that. Because many times when you want to be on the bus, you want to be responsible for the transportation to and from. But sometimes, you know, when the event's over, the parent just wants to leave and take the child. So separate of that is the thing that you are requesting as a legal guardian to transport um, the child. Um, we listed that liability, and that's the key there that yeah. you can show that the liability is in the case. Um, yeah. So these are forms that we've already been utilizing to sort of keep the matter of the it and policy to show that Any questions? You can't the other form for the legal, that second form. Yes, the, the other two forms are just the legal documents that basically is what the state said every month. Do you have any questions? Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> now we have a request for approval. Do you have a question? Does the new harassment rule not apply to parents? It's not the Which harassment? No, the what students the harassment. Yeah, I don't think it's probably a reason. Was it so what you said? They haven't presented for that. For any of the recent questions. And it takes effect September 1. So one thing that the Texas Bar Association has been partnered with and join their association to do that. They have attorneys on the staff that will go in and they will provide this update. So these updates should have taken place um, in you know December, January, and we just caught them. Um, and we will get new updates. Usually it's after September. Yeah, because I think it's mostly on our board manager. During the time. last legislation we came through, I think it was um, November when we got yeah. So it takes them time to figure out the proper wording. And then a lot of things right now are on the commission that the commission has the rules of how we're supposed to you know, meet mandates. And he has the rules on his stuff. So until they do that, they won't release it. But I did talk to them when we were talking about these two, and they said that you know, obviously there's going to be an update coming soon. Yeah. 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 Dr. Dale's talking about a, a you know, ruling that supports that in the event there is a conflict with the student. Given the teacher in July, I think it's important. Okay, so the next item is request of approval for the 1819 budget uh, board amendment. Um, the first budget change is 4.1 for the general fund. We were just moving some funds around um, to cover some expenditures that came up in maintenance. And then um, those are the budget reflections of those that change. <clears throat> and then 4.2 is heavy on our um, activity counts and like the after school program and the device repair that we inherited this year. And so those are just this amendment is just the final amendment to show all the revenue and the expenditures that we had in those um, cost centers and, and those programs. So 6100 is the after school program. Is that what it is? Those $84,000? The, yes, 60, function 61 is for, is mainly the actual program. Tyler, Tyler. and then, oh, I'll just remove all of them. No, and the policy, the policy, that's going to be not a one. So we utilize Title one funds, and we partner with the YMCA and Palestine, um, and Tyler, and Longview. Okay. Last year, we kind of compared the actual program for Tyler Longview after the budget had been adopted, and we weren't really sure what that revenue was expenses were going to look like. So we kind of did a long period and said this is a good election to catch up because the end of this month, uh, August 31, is the end of our fiscal year. So we did not make any more amendments on that. So this is kind of our last chance to catch up and move some things around with what the actual is. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions about the budget amendment? <coughs> okay. 
Did we have a motion to approve the budget amendments for 1819? I guess the last one, the last one of the year. I'll make a motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. I don't know if that's second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And then we have a request for approval for the 1920 budget. Um, <clears throat> All right, so this was the um, primary purpose. Calling this meeting because um, we got to adopt our budget for the last year and the school year. And I apologize that you all didn't get a chance to review it. Um, we were trying to finalize um, all the requirements um, with it that House Bill 3 has impacted us in some manner last year because we were all last year. So, uh, as we note, amendments can be made that you are aware. Um, and so what we do is we compare, um, we ask our staff members to provide us a, a list of our itemized things that they need. We review those lists and determine if we get um, announced that we uh, allotted for the previous year and compare those. We also look at any upcoming um, projects that we might have. For example, <coughs> we had in our 1920 budget, Projection to support the classroom um, in Palestine. So, in order to equip those classrooms in Palestine, we had to have money set aside to purchase furniture, resources for K second, first and second. So, we have to think through all the way through the summer. So, any training, any um, uh, products, um, that instructional material that we're going to need to kick off. To 2021 school year, we always have to think ahead. Um, so, a question. A um, couple of things. Um, the fund balance, can you explain the huge difference between the two? Are you talking about the very top line? Yes. Um, the, so, for on our 1819 year, we took $200,000 from our fund balance mm -hmm. to use for the building payments. Okay. And then this year, we are not doing that for the general fund, that we are only taking a small portion from the device repair funds to um, cover some expenditures that are going to come up through the year. Thank you. Yeah, my yeah. And then, uh, can you talk to us about the instructional leadership and school leadership, uh, the differences in the budget for those two? Instructional leadership was from 70 to 121. More, most of that's going to probably be payroll, uh, and that we did this last year we had two instructional coaches. Mm -hmm. okay. and this, that's not. Oh, I'm sorry. This is. Um, this one is not. Uh, instructional leadership is um, the special program person. And that person previously, last year, was teaching to be 50% under instruction and 50% under this um, function. And so this year he's full on that function. Now that may change throughout the year because it changed last year. And so we may amend it to where it's less. Okay. And school leadership. There's a difference there as well. About a hundred thousand. Is that just pay rate? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. One of them I know is the is the aid for um, is the aid for Tyler for the op twenty-three. Aid for Tyler. Um, last year we also um, did not budget travel for the directors and those kinds of things mm -hmm. because we had cut that, and then this year we put it back in. So that's why that's an additional item. That's why it's more. And then there was an additional position. I think I think that should be that. No, mainly travel. Um, is is twenty two also where we put their some of their budget for their supply companies? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we increase that. It'll be also increased, but because they are all growing, right. their budget for their campus increase. Yeah. So not just that, but it's the travel <clears> plus <throat> the additional positions for Tyler to helping in the front office. My last question. Sure. The uh, transportation, it, when the, why did we spend so much on transportation last year versus what we were doing this year? Because this day and the bus are scheduled to come out of the this year. Okay. So now, in the event that the POs don't hit, uh, we may end up having to do an amendment to bring some money because we're, we're technically <coughs> going to go before the year's over. Mm -hmm. The bus is supposed to deliver in the next few weeks. Okay. So, those funds are the and the bus, but if we 
and a tax of one. So that would, all that would end up doing would be your reserve on your 1819 would be higher because you wouldn't have spent it. Right. And then we'll just transfer that expense to your business. Okay. And the community service, um, you said that it's the after school program? Yes. Um, so it's doubling pretty much the budget? Well, that 57 doesn't include what you just approved. Ah, right? got it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Are you comfortable decreasing maintenance operations so much? Well, it's mainly the buildings. Okay. Because you know, last year we paid, last year the budget was 467000 for the same thing this year. So we left the dual barley to not long term. So we've already paid off, they've already taken us under the cash flow. And they got to take it. They didn't know. Yeah, which I thought they were not going to do. So long people will be um, paying for it. So now we'll move towards um, paying. Absolutely. Any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Do we have a motion to approve the proposed budget? Do we have a second? I'll second. <laughs> All in favor, can you say aye? Aye. Any opposed? And then we have, do you have any information items for us? Um, no, because I know we just met, so enrollment projections are still strong. We're still getting parents calling, um, wanting to know if their child's going to get accepted. Um, and also, we still have strong interest in receiving information about the school. So, I'm really excited. I'm um, looking forward to um, <coughs> the growth that we're having and opening up the new campus and the, the new um, grades and policies. Year. Ooh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's what we. That's what our next budget will be. Oh, it's not related to this. I was just gonna make. You might want to consider to save some money to have to you get know, a group of parent volunteers that bring their racket sets where you dispose of the old bus and get the seats out and put the other buses in the portable seats. They all fit. That was something Zach was supposed to do. That they were doing. We've been trying to talk to them about what to use in our house to use the bus for the bus. That's about to say the seats and that bus are perfect. The okay. seats and the other two buses that you'll save a hundred dollars. Um, enrollment, anybody have any questions? We're in strong position there. Facilities, um, updates, we discussed that. Um, that was got a group of us going over some policy this afternoon. Um, we walked the campus. Um, Feedback that I've you know, um, they're, they're, we're moving in. Um, I, I talked to Andy Krause the other day, giving me an update. Um, everything looks strong, set to meet the time requirements, but we're really um, excited about that opportunity. We haven't had a chance to um, take a look at the new gym or the, the renovations here in Tyler. Um, that area is definitely not. We're really excited to have um, that renovation. So, facilities continue. We definitely want to continue the conversations. And
prepared and um, they got they got staff down there today. They're helping working together. Um, any other questions? Financial updates. These numbers haven't changed much from the last board meeting. Um, we've received 5.9 million and we've expensed 5.5 million on the um, general fund budget. And then our activity funds, um, the amendments that you just approved are not reflected in this. So some of these uh, lines show upside down, but they will be fixed once um, I add the amendment to the document. What's the projected number? <coughs> For, oh, for the, the budget was 98, but by the time we get there, it will be more than half. That's the model of the year, right? The, the yeah. And then we show that there's going to be at least 100 for the next year, but we don't feel confident that's going to be much larger. We always plan for it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's also the rule really good there. Correct, we are. We are. We have okay. laws. We and have to uh, I will tell you that we are at, um, spending the entire 100% of the um, house bill three additional funds as well, as well as other additional funds. Because in order to create a salary scale, and then on top of that, to provide the raise and the cost of the more than um, the amount we're receiving, which is around two hundred eighty something thousand dollars that we receive from house. Our district. Our district. Dr. Kiki, Dr. Sherman, any comments you want to make on that? I think uh, some of the critical attributes that we tried to build into the new system is that first of all, we're very competitive. Second of all, it reinforces uh, teachers that have aspirational careers for each one of the aspirational goals that we have so that every teacher in the UA has an aspirational career. Uh, it does recognize longevity here at UTEC within the uh, university, all uh, recognition there. And it also values uh, pre service teachers who come from our program here at UT Tribal. And so there's an aspect in there of the budget. There's something built in there. You know, if, if you're a new teacher from UT Tyler, there's a small recognition of that. That's recognition of that. Yeah, absolutely. So those are just some of the quick ways to do it. It's on its way to the provost. So we need to do it. That's going to be presented. Yes. So our goal, I do want to say something before I get to answer the question um, that I was thinking about when Dr. Chermel was reviewing. Uh, I just lost it. So, <laughs> um, oh, I know what I was going to say. Please note, we have not, this is not something we've been taking lightly. Um, <coughs> we had a pretty firm plan, and just this week, there were, we received, there were four districts that released their salary scales. And when we saw that salary scale, it made us more difficult to adjust based on our competitors. So, we had something last week. We were pretty solid on it, and then four school districts in our local, in our areas, and that impacted um, all three of our areas. Um, and you may be aware, Palestine posted theirs, Jackson OIT posted theirs, Tyler has, um, has Capitol Hill, Tyler. So we just gathered those in, that information, and that really made us re look at um, our school. And so I think we're in a better position now. I think you're going to find that. Uh, I think I can agree with that um, in the staff at large. Um, our proposal does include all staff, the whole pay staff. Um, and, and because of the equity, um, when you increase teacher salaries and you have a whole other group of staff members that don't increase, it costs, you know, it costs the equity balance. So um, the proposal that we were submitting doesn't just show an increase for all UA staff. Um, so to answer to um, Go back to your question. Did you ask me that again? Or? It's just the projected data is when it's oh, so um, it has been sent out to, as Dr. Turner said, to the provost once it is approved um, by the president. Um, we will be in the position because it's reflected in the budget in this time. So we will be in the position to be able to begin communicating that to you. My goal is to communicate it at the annual meeting um, and be able to share with them how we came about it. With the staff creating a salary scale, we will have to present them all with new um, agreements. So they will have it in writing their new salary for the entire school system. If I could just, uh, just for our community members, most salary schedules in the state gets which are built on longevity. And the UT system does not permit just pay increases based on longevity, it has to be based on merit and performance. So our salary schedule built for merit and performance, not, and so it's not exclusively just based on the number of years that you've been here. You have to define that what you want to do. Excellent. Any other questions? I know our staff will be able to take the uh, announcement. So it won't be as simple as, like I said, a traditional IT system where we say we're going to pay everyone right. all the time. Everyone will get an individualized letter so what they're paying. Any other questions? Any additional questions? Okay, um, we have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. <laughs> we have a second. Oh, sorry. <laughs>
you need to do. Love, baby, night. Thank you.